This is a Conversations with Creatives visual podcast for Opus. In the run-up to summer, as the days get warmer and explode with new life, many more of us begin taking our art practice outdoors. Being outside is great for creativity. It can quieten the cacophony of thoughts and worries that preoccupy our modern minds, making space for our imaginations to take hold. From vast and wild mountaintops to the small blades of grass poking out from cracks in the pavement, nature is a magical everyday force anyone can draw inspiration from. Over the next couple of podcasts, we'll be hearing from four plein air artists who thrive on outdoor exploration. In this episode, we turn to the urban environment with Sandro Tumeluan and Jose de Juan, both immensely talented in differing styles They'll explain how they draw inspiration from the city, offering insight, techniques, and a shared wonder for the concrete jungle. My name is Zandro, and my family name is Tumaliwan. My background is in architecture, so that's probably why you see me uh, sketching those buildings a lot. And for the last 20 years, and I've been working um, as interior designer. I do the sketching a lot when I'm traveling, especially with my family, and it gives me a chance for them to sort of um, inspire them and share some of my, uh, what I've learned when I was a student and some of the history of the buildings. And I like it when I'm actually sitting in front of the building or stand, standing in front of the building because I've, I can feel the whole scale. I, I can feel the whole thing and the, the whole vibe of the building and around that building, especially when, when you're standing in, in a street or where everybody's just passing by you and you can feel it. And that's the difference, like, when I tried to sketch from the photos that I took, it's, I guess it becomes very technical instead of just a loosey-goosey sketch with what you're capturing is actually the vibe. What I like about sketching outside, I don't feel the urge to kind of sketch the building uh, perfectly. I just kind of have to fill the building and, and sketch it. I, I don't have to count how many windows, how many floors. <laughs> I guess it's, it's a difference when I sketch sketching uh, buildings uh, as compared to, let's say, natural elements. The moods around me affects how I uh, how I sketch. And as I said, you know, when there's a lot of people, there's a very active, vibrant uh, mood around me. Uh, it reflects on on my sketch with, with the with the nature. Uh, I, I try to capture the the softness of the whole environment. Whereas when I sketch buildings, I have to I try to capture the the, the hardness or the stability of that building. So I tend to use um, ink a lot and then do watercolor. Whereas in when I go in park or I sketch part of the uh, part of the river or creek, I just use watercolor and a pencil. This is the month that where, you know, the weather started uh, getting better here in Vancouver, where it's more conducive to go outside and sketch. I, I like it better when it's not planned because that's where the challenge is. Like you, you go to a neighborhood and say, what's nice about the neighborhood? I treat every building differently uh, depends on what the details the important details are and that's where i focus on when i'm sketching outside my brain is more active i look for things i guess i don't have to think of what to sketch the more i go out then like said the more i find my happy place it gets me excited I, I do a lot of photography as well before but recording my experience in sketch kind of stays more with me and becomes more personal. My brain becomes active when I'm outside. Uh, I become more observant. I see things. I I want to record things. Um, and even with photos, sometimes you miss things, except when you're doing sketch, you're actually focused on that. Your fo- in the photo, you just take it and put it in your pocket. You'll uh, not see it again. With the sketch, yes, it's very loose, but I feel it's more active. This is how it feels in that place. I've, I've tried doing urban sketches with the tablet and it just doesn't feel the same. It's the sound of that pencil when you start sketching on the paper, right? It just 
feels good. And the smell of the, 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 the graphite, the smell of the pencil. And the, you know, the mess that you do when you, when you do water, when you use watercolor or paint, when you do it in a tablet, oh, that's a mistake. I'll just erase it. Undo, undo. With the paper, pencil, or watercolor, with the actual materials, you become more creative on, let's say you make a mistake. How do I solve that? For the upcoming artists and urban sketches, so just go out there, just go out and explore. And if you feel the urge to sketch something, just just do it. Always carry something with you, even a small booklet, even a piece of paper. I've, I've even done sketches in, in napkins. Uh, I have my day timer full of sketches rather than actual schedules of what to do for that day. You know, if, if you're an artist or if you're an architect or engineer or designer, it keeps you aware of your environment. You, you become being more observant, especially with urban sketching. You want to feel the whole space. You want that whole feel to be um, reflected in your sketch. Uh, even if it doesn't look perfect, if, even if it's just a loose sketch. But the whole essence, the whole vibe, the whole experience is there. My name is Jose de Juan, and I usually do plein air uh, work, and um, I do a lot of sketching also, uh, watercolor, uh, and, and do a little bit of studio uh, work when I manage to get a studio. <laughs> it's not my uh, pay job, but it's what I do for my passion and to keep me alive and happy. When I go outside and I paint, I'm not uh, usually looking for something is that moment where you stop and you don't sometimes know exactly why and that happens a lot when when you're outside in any setting it could be urban or it could be nature I, I find myself that painting outdoors inspires me in the sense that I don't look for what's pretty or it's usually the thing that strikes you it could be a color it could be the way the shadow is creating an interesting composition uh, it's not the thing that you know, it's what you see. That's what I like about it. It's always a surprise. And I think the point of plein air is not to try to copy. What it's, you, you, like I said, you express what you see. You can put, if you can put it in words, okay, what I like about this is the color scheme. or, And then that's what the goal of the painting becomes. It's not trying to copy nature or trying to take a photograph because nature is always, always going to win and it's in infinitely detailed. When you're outside, it's, you're more surprised. So it's what you can you discover or what surprises you. And that's, that's to me, the beauty of it. Um, so yes, it's a different kind of creativity. It's more accepting of what happens. It's about conveying an idea. So it, it's trying to reduce your materials to some people are very strict about the palette they use. I think it also depends on the environment. For example, when I was painting in London, I used a lot of black because there's a lot of black gates. And it turns out that that pops beautifully against the red of the buses and that becomes London. And the Pacific Northwest, I prime my canvases always with a warm color because there's so much green. You have to be adapting to where you're painting, but uh, but the main thing is to convey the message. So a very reduced palette of warms and cools. I also look, I use some transparent colors like Indian yellow or oxide or, or ultramarine blue for the back, uh, for the shadows. And um, and then I use also not, not, don't carry many brushes. You know, flats are great. They create nice edges. You want a variety of edges and the flats are perfect to create edges and then more ambiguous. So a, a pared down equipment, it's good to deal with sketching outdoors and a friendly attitude. Because <laughs> people are going to talk to you. Uh, that's if you're especially in a city. I'm not a morning person. Many people like to paint in the morning, but sometimes after lunch, oh, well, okay, let's go. And the bus is just, um, it, it's the one that the first one that arrives. And sometimes it goes downtown and I paint downtown, or sometimes I just let it run until the end of the line and see what happens. Um, you know, I've gotten to some very unpainterly places, but you try to make it work. But hopefully what you convey is that the 
the, the, there's something beautiful everywhere. You don't have to travel to Tuscany every year. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to live in a beautiful, uh, you know, historical town. There's going to be beautiful things, even in modern settings, which is something that I find a lot of people, oh, I don't like to paint cars or, or modern buildings. And there's painters that do wonderful stuff with modern. What I do a lot is squint. Because if you squint, you stop seeing the details of things. You stop seeing cars and buildings, and you start looking at shapes and light. And so my state of mind is very, it's almost like, it's almost like a scavenger. I'm looking like this all around, because there's going to be something that's going to just snap. And, it, and sometimes I have to look back and see, OK, what was that? that um, uh, and sometimes it's just the way the light is falling and making an interest. L or the contrast between two buildings or maybe the haze it could be the shadow raking against the wall and that's that's my state of mind it's very let's just soak it in soak it in. <laughs> and sometimes it's difficult you have to make choices sometimes there's one great painting here another one there my advice would be to just try to not be stuck on on doing the perfection it's just actually being outside what's the reward in itself. I, I've met all kinds of personalities that do plein air, and it seems to be a little bit of an addiction and a passion. I know it's a little cheesy, but that's it. It's the, the finding the, the moment every day that, you know, at least it was worth living for this. <laughs> in the next episode, We'll be hearing from plein air masters Maria Josenhans and Dominique Modlinski, whose works capture the spirit and energy of wilder environments. I hope you'll join us. Thanks for listening. <laughs>